95. The Morning Majlis, talking the stories that are shaping headlines. This is, this is Pulse 95. So United States health officials have approved a new drug for Alzheimer's disease. That's the first one they've approved in nearly 20 years. And it's giving hope to millions of Americans and many around the world over the age of 65 who suffer from this brain disease. The Food and Drug Administration announced it had granted approval to a drug called Aducanumab for patients with Alzheimer's disease. It is the only drug approved by U.S. regulators to treat the underlying cause of this disease, the buildup of fatty plaque in the brain. And clinical trials developed by Biogen Inc. showed a reduction in the plaque, which would thereby help slow mental decline. However, this is a controversial approval. There have been warnings from independent experts that the treatment does not work. The FDA is now requiring Biogen to conduct additional clinical trials to verify whether this drug has benefits or not. Yeah, the director of the FDA's Center for Drug Evaluation and Research uh, uh, said in, in, in a statement uh, two days ago, uh, he said that there has been considerable public debate on whether Aduhelm uh, should be approved or not, as is often the case when it comes to interpreting scientific data. Um, and uh, the expert community has offered uh, basically differing perspectives on this. And at the end of the day, he said we followed our usual course of action when making regulatory decisions in situations where the data, they're not straightforward. Um, and they also said that the FDA ultimately decided to use accelerated approval and concluded that the benefits of Adul, Aduhelm uh, for patients uh, with Alzheimer's disease outweighed the risks of the therapy itself. So basically, under accelerated uh, approval, approval, the drug uh, uh, Aducanumab, uh, it will be or will still be studied. And with this program, drug companies are required to conduct post-approval studies known as P phase four um, uh, confirmatory trials to verify that treatments have clinical benefit. Now, if the uh, confirmatory trial does not verify the drug's benefit, then the FDA at that case could remove the drug from the market. So, and um, we know that uh, Alzheimer's it worsens over time and it's a progressive disease, obviously, where dementia symptoms, they gradually worsen over a number of years. And it has multiple stages um, so you have to also know what stage you're at uh, if you have Alzheimer's or you know anyone with Alzheimer's disease so there's stage one which is before these symptoms appear there's stage two the basic for forgetfulness there's st stage three basically when you notice that there is memory difficulties uh, stage four is more than memory loss and then stage five is decreased independence on yourself and um, Stage six is severe symptoms and st stage seven, sadly, uh, lack of physical control uh, added with al also the forgetfulness. Yeah, it's a very terrifying uh, disease is. for sure. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was well captured also in, in, in terms of movies, uh, the father being one of the uh, very oh, recent yeah. ones as well. <laughs> so uh, it just, it, you know, it gives you goosebumps in terms of how intense this could be. Now, uh, for a lot of us over here in the United Arab Emirates, uh, mo the medications that get the approval of the Ministry of Health and Prevention are the ones that get... Um, uh, sold here. So the FDA ruling has no direct impact to us, uh, but it is on a global scale uh, the first time that a, treat, uh, that a treatment that tackles destructive mechanism in the brain uh, being approved. It is not a miracle drug nor a cure. Uh, according to analysis uh, from medical experts. Uh, and in, in the UK, for example, uh, the director of the UK Dementia Research Institute said the decision to approve uh, the medication marked a hugely significant milestone in the search for treatments uh, for Alzheimer's disease. And over the past decade, more than 100 potential Alzheimer's treatments have flopped. Uh, so it just goes to show how and difficult it is uh, uh, to, to to have a direct cure, and mm. and and the mental health uh, uh, industry, for example, is 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 there is no set cure for anything as well. It's, it's the, the 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 doctors do come up with prescriptions to control the symptoms, but it's such a complicated organ, our yeah. brain. Uh, right. That you can't sort of come up with a with a cure, one quick fix, and that it took twenty years mm. for a treatment that 
experts say at best it's marginally effective, and that's the debate right now. Now, Biogen Inc. did not immediately disclose how much the treatment would cost, but analysts are estimating that the drug could cost between thirty thousand yes. dollars and fifty thousand dollars for a year. That's right. That's right. Uh, worth of treatment, and uh, a nonprofit institute of clinical and economic review did a preliminary analysis. They are calling for the drug to be priced at much less, 2500 yeah. to 8300 a year uh, to be a good value based on what they call a, quote, small overall health gains. So what is this discussion about the effectiveness of this drug? Why is there such a heated debate about whether or not it works? Well, in November, the FDA outside panel of neurological experts voted no to a series of questions on whether reanalyzed data from a single study submitted by Biogen showed that the drug was effective. Biogen also stopped two studies of this drug back in 2019 after disappointing results suggested that the drug would not meet its goal of slowing mental and functional decline in Alzheimer's patients. So people, the, the experts don't even know if it works and they still need to conduct more studies. But yeah. yeah, I don't it's know. It's very expensive, as you just said. I mean, who, yeah. who affords that? It can go up to $70,000 a year. And uh, it is taken uh, IV intravenous um, through inter, uh, through the intravenous uh, route. And uh, that's for the level number one, uh, for stage one. And also it is taken four weeks apart. But yeah, it, it could go for a whole year. It could go for long term. Now, initially, they do it for about 52 weeks, a total of 14 doses of that drug. But it could go, uh, depends on the, the condition and the stage of the Alzheimer's. So they could go up to a, an additional like um, about a f- 115 doses of this drug. So this is very, very expensive for the patient. How will they be, e- be able to afford it? That's a big uh, um, alarm situation here as well not mm. just the effectiveness of it yeah. so imagine it's not being effective and putting all this money on exactly on the, the, the thing about dementia as well is uh, because the, the lack of treatment options isn't all there it's critical to detect Alzheimer's at an early age and just look out for all the signs as well and then uh, doctors say that look all of us are forgetful and things usually come back a few hours later or when you're not so stressed and trying to remember that thing that you had been trying to remember. But when you have something that gets worse over time, age-related memory loss, that might be uh, a point of concern as well. But uh, there are some promising developments in the healthcare field on detecting and treating mild memory problems from Alzheimer's. In fact, uh, simple blood tests appear to have a re- reasonable diagnostic and predictive value as well. Uh, and they're also putting together a new digital-based cognitive tests to try and better manage it. So a lot of advances in brain research, uh, but still a frightening uh, brain disease that takes place. They say one of the best ways to prevent Alzheimer's is your diet. Uh, a doctor speaking to media Veggies. said, yes, that's it. They yes. said, uh, if you're on a vegetarian or Mediterranean diet, you have a quote unquote cleaner brain mm-hmm. in regards to Alzheimer's pathology than those who eat a diet that is rich in saturated fat as well. And a vegetarian diet has also been associated with what doctors say is reduced amyloid pathology in the brain, which reduces vascular risks, controls blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, and weight. All of those have shown to decrease your risk for developing dementia. So being mentally, socially, and physically active, constantly exercising your brain and being on more veggies uh, than ever is going to help your brain in the long run. Also the parents, when they were uh, helping us grow up, Raising us, they, yeah. they, they, when they said eat your veggies, uh, they were right. Uh, yeah, after definitely. all, so they know what they're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> got to follow the good old Popeye uh, analogy as well, and uh, spinach. Get, get all the spinach running through, and um, yeah, that's uh, the, it's very important to be looking after uh, your brain. Maybe play, try to play some more memory games. That could be quite cool. Yeah, uh, and to get yeah, that de- definitely will stimulate. Yeah. Brain's a muscle. Don't let it rot away. Right. Keep it stimulated. Wow, well, so much to take back, guys. Uh, be my, be careful out and about on the roads as well. Uh, be attentive uh, as well, and uh, hopefully that could be a good exercise for the brain as well. Instead of stressing out over. The traffic situation we'll keep you updated with the uh, traffic updates after a bit of a musical entertainment and if you'd like to get involved with the discussions uh, text us on 4215 Pulse 95. the morning majlis talking the stories that are shaping headlines 
This is Pulse 95. Well, a new color-coded system for Al Hasan app, uh, it has been approved by the UAE's Ministry of Health and Prevention. It basically, it will cover six categories, including fully vaccinated, people awaiting their second dose or who are late for their second dose even, um, those exempt from receiving the vaccine and those not vaccinated yet. Now, this will show how recently a person was vaccinated, which has a bearing on how long they have a green status for. And the ministry said federal and local authorities, they will be able to use Al-Husun according to their individual needs and procedures. And the app will ease movement and also enable tourism nationwide. Officials also said that, uh, that, that only vaccinated people will be allowed to attend live events starting from June 6th. So it's already been implemented and the app has become widely used to check the vaccination status of those crossing the checkpoint into all Emirates uh, especially in Abu Dhabi and Dubai um, and especially in, in certain places in, in the, uh, the neighboring Emirate of Dubai for sure and I know that Abdul Karim you actually you did a coverage yesterday mm-hmm. uh, for one of the venues in uh, Dubai mm-hmm. and uh, you got to see how this is going to be implemented and how we're going this whole process is going to go right yeah uh, look we try to uh, we will be in touch with uh, the event venues here in the Emirate of Sharjah yeah. uh, as uh, soon as they get some more clear guidelines uh, right. uh, because uh, it's a federal ruling that came from the Ministry of Health and uh, Prevention to say that from June 6 onwards only vaccinated people will be allowed to attend events. Now, then Dubai, obviously, with the DTCM guidelines, uh, implemented whatever the DTCM or the Tourism Board has told hotels. Over here, we have the Sharjah uh, Tourism Authority uh, that uh, tells uh, the hotels the guidelines, as well as the Crisis and Emergency Management uh, uh, Authority that we have for um, for the Emirates of Sharjah. Um, so, so I walked through. They, they walked me through the entire process. Yes. Um, there is no leeway to say, "Oh, I have hundred guests, and maybe one or two have not got vaccinated. Mm, yeah. They don't have theirs. Is it okay? Can we slide them past?" No, that there is no. There, there yeah. just is. There is a. There is a clear guideline that these guys have got, and there's a guard standing at the front of the ballroom. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and a couple of meters away from the ballroom as well, so I couldn't l- run past him. Yeah. To say I'm just going to run to the ballroom and join the party. No, I can't. There is a distance, and they stopped me there. There's a temperature check, and they check my uh, Al Hassan app. So and do you have to have Al Hassan app only, or uh, you can use other? Uh, methods or other apps. Yeah, there's a lot of people who fly in, right? So right. some people are hosting weddings, you know, flying in from different countries, in yeah. fact. So if you have a, a vaccination a document. certificate... document. Document, a vaccination to prove certificate. prove that, it's fine. Yes. Right. But you also need a PCR test. What? Yes. You do? Yes, even if you're vaccinated, you do need a PCR Before test. Before attending? In about 48 hours. 48 hours. Yeah. Okay. And this is not just weddings. Uh-huh. This is social events. And this is... All events. All Sporting... Events. What we saw yesterday, football, yeah. uh, the right. Emirati uh, game against Thailand, uh, the football World Cup qualifier, all of them had to carry PCR test reports. Oh. The, the, uh, the, obviously the staff. And, so you have to keep in mind that you have to do a PCR test and you have to be fully vaccinated for both doses, not one. Yeah, both doses. Fully vaccinated yeah. means both doses. And for us, guess what? Whenever right. we go for events and do outside broadcast, the rules will also apply for us. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, Get those nostrils ready. The world we're living in right yeah, now. It's just, so there are yeah. categories apparently, mm. right? Yep. Ahmed? There are categories yeah. indeed. And uh, look, some people are exempt from taking the vaccine. So mm. if you are or you went through the vaccine exemption certificate via the approved process, then a negative PCR test will see your husband status appear green for seven days. Mm. If you're unvaccinated, uh, you're not exempt from taking the jab, but you'll have your husband status being green for three days following your PCR test result. Yeah, there are various categories, uh, various color codes as well, but I think this really simplifies it, streamlines it as well, and makes it a lot easier for officials uh, and uh, event organizers as well to get everything moving smoothly 
um, in, in that fashion as well. So it's really, really great to see it all being simplified and streamlined via a single app mm-hmm. uh, that confirms the safety of uh, or your vaccine status and PCR test status as well. Yeah, I mean, that, that will this color coding system, which you know, makes it very standard, uh, avoids uh, the queuing, the long queues to an extent, because, uh, you know, when I went down to the ballroom, I had to show my PCR test and uh, they looked at it and they looked at the timing of when I took it because obviously it gives you the date of the last PCR test taken or test negative valid for a certain number of days. Mm-hmm. You had to read it. But now because it's going to be streamlined, you just have to show the color. Yeah. And they can see it from far away and say, okay, that's fine, <laughs> you know, come on through. So that avoids the uh, being held up and... Uh, and the queues. The queues. It, right. it could help queues in check-in counters. It could help queues in 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 certain venues where you need a PCR test, uh, such as Al Qasimi Hospital, guys. Mm-hmm. Al Qasimi yeah. Hospital. You need to be carrying a negative PCR test. However, if you've been vaccinated, it's okay. You don't need a PCR test, but you can still go into Al Qasimi Hospital in in the Emirates to charge it. But yeah, you, a lot of places now you just need to have uh, to be vaccinated. A lot of people have been getting those vaccines. Mm. Uh, UAE's uh, numbers are pretty high. I mean, as per the latest update, which was quite some time ago, in fact, uh, the number of fully vaccinated people from the population is just over 40 percent and Mm. continues to climb rapidly as well uh, with vaccination being easy to access and also being something that you probably should do uh, given the there are no drawbacks to doing so and the great advantages. uh, The fact that this enables us to return to normalcy here. So uh, get your shots. (laughs) And the UAE is definitely a couple of weeks ago, it was ranked uh, uh, the first country globally in the number of vaccination doses administered per 100 people in the total population. Mm. That's another milestone to be recorded for the UAE as well. So this is just evidence of the UAE's success in its national vaccination campaign and its uh, efforts uh, to reach sustainable recovery for sure from this uh, virus. Mm. Well, we've had plenty of milestones for sure. Yep. Uh, Now... There's one place where you where it's not massively mandated to be carrying your PCR test results or even your uh, vaccination certificates, but I am sure uh, when you do want to get onto the capsule, you might need it. But as a, a a federal ruling in that part of the of the universe, you don't really need it, and it is space. <laughs> That's what we're going to be talking about. Yes, we're going to be talking about space. One individual will be going to space with his brother, using his own. Yeah, using his own. Yes, basically, absolutely <laughs> interesting. That's like what happens. His own well, rocket ship, I guess. Yeah, the richest man going on space. Yeah. Well, eyebrows being raised. <laughs> you know, we'll have no. We'll, Elon Musk will be the same, will be the richest he'll man. Be, he'll be jealous in the world. Uh, Elon uh, Musk will be jealous. Yeah. Well, he's got his own space company. He yeah. does, though. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's <laughs> starting their own space companies, indeed. Well, stay with us in the morning majlis. That discussion is going to be up next here on the morning majlis. The morning majlis, talking the stories that are shaping headlines. This is is Pulse 95. Island destinations, holidays, uh, wonderful sun, sand and sea is what everyone desires. You can get that in the United Arab Emirates. You know, some people have that point. But then the weather is is, is kind of a little bit of an obstacle because you've got to wait till it's slightly more pleasant before you go to the beaches. But one country is opening up its famous holiday destination and Sharjah's mm. Arabia has announced that it is ready to transport all of us over there. Oh yeah, I've been there. You've been there too. Phuket? Phuket, yeah. yes. Thailand in general. Mm-hmm. Uh, Air Arabia is it, it did announce yesterday the introduction of this new service to Phuket, uh, Thailand with direct flights from Sharjah International Airport starting on the 2nd of July. So mark your calendars, everyone. 2nd of July, starting that date, you can actually uh, travel from Sharjah to Phuket, Thailand officially. And Arabia is the first, of course, uh, just to remind you, it's the first low-cost carrier in the region to launch a direct route to Phuket. So there's no other way until now. That's the only route you have and the only um, uh, uh, 
place or the only airline that's actually operating this at, at the moment. So the Tourism uh, uh, Authority of Thailand has confirmed that travelers who have been vaccinated against COVID-19 from low-risk countries, they will be allowed to fly direct to the popular holiday destination without having to quarantine from the 1st of July. So visitors will only need to stay in the area they landed for seven days before they can visit other destinations in the country. So if you're going to Phuket, you have to stay in Phuket for when your um, hotel or the venue that you're staying at or the place you're staying at in Phuket for seven days, then you can go to other places uh, uh, onwards. Yeah, and uh, it's a massive tropical island, uh, oh, very, yeah. very popular with tourists as well. It's the biggest island in Thailand, in fact. It's almost the size of Singapore. And there's really something for everybody, whether you're looking at high-end options or you're looking for something more affordable. It's uh, a, a, a beautiful place to be. It's like a stereotypical yeah. paradise island, the ones you see in movies as well. And there's just so much to do there uh, in terms of entertainment, in terms of leisure. And they even say it's a great honeymoon destination oh, as yeah. well so whether you want to stay out on the beach and enjoy the scenery or be right in the heart of the city is really something there for everybody as well and uh one fascinating fact about uh, phuket and thailand in general is locals primarily rely on motorcycles so if you're going to be walking around the city uh you're going to be seeing a lot of uh bike riders as well and uh tuk -tuks. Yeah, the Tuk Tuk's as well. Yeah, they you've been there. You guys know more than I do. Yeah, Tuk Tuk's. It's amazing. But, you know, I, I actually went both uh, to Bangkok and um, Phuket. For me, I prefer Phuket any day. There's so much Why? to do there. And the, uh, the the nature there is even nicer. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, Bangkok is like the, the capital and it's the, um, the busy life. And it's like metropolitan mm -hmm. more than it is kind of... Um, nature uh, oriented but yeah there's so much to do that you have the walking street as well the walking street market in phuket I oh think. yeah yeah it's very nice as well um, um you have nice viewpoints as well you have nice attractions that they have in, in phuket it's amazing but like number one is the nature there's james bond island as well in phuket uh, well known for uh, being featured in one of the bond movies um, and uh, it's it's a great Their destination. Their temples and markets, they're very also very well known. Yeah. yeah exactly. I think very they affordable. have the floating market. Is it in Phuket? I think it is in Phuket. Well, floating markets are very Thai trend anyway. So yeah. you can find in many cities in, but in Thailand. The most famous one, I think it's, it's in Phuket, yes. I believe. Yeah. yeah. No, it's a great Beautiful place. One. Uh, and look, it's, it's it, one of the best advantages of, that Thailand has to offer is its food and hospitality and that's one of the reasons why it tends to be a very very popular amongst uh, uh, travelers from gcc and their massages uh, that are the best yeah oh yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. Thai massages yeah exactly so no, look everything's really good uh, comparing it because of our currency it, it is quite uh, affordable a very us. affordable that i was just about to say that yeah. yeah very affordable yeah so that's one of the big reasons why it is a very popular destination i love going down there and the great the best thing about that country is it's tropical weather so even if you go in the winter or even in the summer you'll expect to see the same yeah. kind of the weather but yeah when it gets a torrential downpour it's interesting place as well uh, now thinking about it, it just makes me miss some of those wonderful travels that we used to do, and, uh, and I think uh, I'd be very keen on going down again to to Thailand one day and uh, with Air Arabia. Shout out, guys! Air Arabia guys, you know you, you could potentially They're doing have, incredible. Could have been morning majlis from Phuket. Yeah, yeah, please hook yeah, us up. Yeah, that'd be They're cool. opening up left and right, like yeah. new flights every day. Like True. it's almost like every day we hear that they're announcing that they're open up, opening up a new route. So it's great. Yeah, but yeah, we have a long break coming uh, coming uh, up, and we're expected for it's a long break expected to happen yeah. now for the oh, Eid yeah. Al-Adha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, plus, we have the also the school summer holidays. They're also rapidly approaching, uh, and of course, we all want to travel. Probably this is the best time, and we know that this week Spain and France are preparing to welcome back tourists as well after being closed uh, mm. uh, to to the pandemic. So to coincide with the reopening, uh, Emirates Airlines also said that it will increase its flight schedule to both destinations uh, 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 as demand for travel obviously increases as well. So they're opening up for, uh, they're going to increase their uh, flights mm. uh, to four, I believe, uh, weekly to Barcelona uh, and also other places as well to France as well. 
they're op- operating a daily flight to Paris mm. um, as well. So now l- let's look at the countries as well that are quickly, quickly. Let's look at the 19 <laughs> destinations um, that travelers can fly to quarantine free uh, here uh, from the from the United Arab Emirates. Those being Cyprus, Greece, Italy, Russia, Turkey, Spain, uh, France, starting from tomorrow, Jordan, Lebanon, Bahrain, Egypt, Maldives, Seychelles, Phuket, starting from July 2nd, Kenya, uh, Tanzania, um, Morocco, United States, and Mexico, also starting from July 2nd. Shout out to Kenya. Yes. Great place. <laughs> Definitely, for sure. But uh, everything seems so close yet so far because there's a lot of people out there who still feel slightly wary of booking those holidays because they just never know what's in store is it the best time to travel is it still safe to travel is there going to be a lot of people uh, by the time things do improve and uh, they will be out and about that uh, travel might be a bit more expensive than usual you never know well stay with us on the morning majlis do send us your thoughts and uh, concerns on the text lines 4215 we've got the business headlines uh, up next followed by a bit of adele before we return with the discussions here on the program. Stay tuned to Pulse95. Stay fit. Stay fit. Stay fit. Well, it was a big night yesterday of games and uh, qualifiers playing against each other. Now, the UAE was a big night for for us mm. because uh, the UAE was in sublime form once again uh, as it eased past Thailand 3-1 to one on the, yeah, a Monday night uh, at the Zabil Stadium to remain second in Group G of the 2022 World Cup and 2023 Asian Cup joint qualifiers. It's amazing. You know, what I found uh, interesting yesterday is like all these teams, they get so excited when they win the qualifiers. Yeah. But when they do qualify for the main finals, they get nervous because they're going to get battered by other teams. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's so it's so embarrassing and it's not it's not fun for some teams that do qualify and then lose out on every World Cup game and then they blame the team for it. But but uh, nonetheless, it's, 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 it's just a prestige to be part of the World Cup and the United Arab Emirates, last time they were part of a World Cup was way back in 1990. So I'm pretty sure everyone is uh, hoping, keeping the fingers crossed that the country will qualify for this one because they've kept the dreams alive uh, by beating Thailand. Uh, but other teams also did extremely well uh, yesterday and uh, it's such a... Uh, a great moment as well. Yeah, we had a pretty good game uh, when India played Bangladesh, in fact, uh, during the qualifiers. And uh, India was pretty dominant in its Mm. performance. In the last 12 minutes of the game, India scored not once, but twice uh, through captain Sunil Chetri. First, it was a header from Ashik Kurunyan's cross. Then in stoppage time, a well-directed shot in the top corner Uh, With uh, that, they score twice. And with this, India has now moved to third position in the last Group E standings as well. So that's uh, one of the games from the qualifiers as well, but uh, many more as well. Yeah, definitely. Iraq as well. Uh, Iraq marked their return to the Asian qualifiers for the FIFA World Cup uh, 2022 and AFC Asian Cup China 2023, obviously, with a 4-1 to victory over Cambodia in Group C as well. And they were actually the last team in the group to resume their campaign. Um, and uh, they played beautifully the lines of Mesopotamia. Uh, they quickly pressed Cambodia into mm-hmm. a defensive position within the first 20 seconds. Uh, uh, Mohanad Ali received a pass outside the box and took advantage of the, the Cambodian defense to send his strike into the bottom left corner of the net to open uh, the, the scoring. It was a beautiful game and uh, they uh, Iraq remained very much in control of, of possession and they continued on uh, that pace. Yeah, Syria had a pretty good game too. They mm-hmm. joined uh, Japan as the second country to qualify for the third round of Asia's FIFA World Cup 2022 following a win over Guam in Group A as well. Syria's doing really well. They've been uh, having a winning streak. Yeah, Yeah. Seven matches in the group, uh, seven wins in a row. And uh, China has also had to wait until the second half to find goals against uh, the resilient Philippines, but they ended up taking the win as well. Yep, exciting times indeed for the uh, the Asian qualifiers. But another 
uh, tournament to look forward to and uh, another payment to make to your telecoms providers to get the dedicated coverage of the tournament. It is the Euro 2020. Group stages will kick off on the 11th of June and this is going to be a very interesting one because uh, they are celebrating the 60th uh, edition of this and this is why we have 11 cities who have been chosen as host cities of the tournament. So it's not one country hosting it as a whole, but each different country will be hosting uh, the games. Uh, so uh, there will be uh, as far as Bucharest as well as Baku, where the games will be taking place uh, for the Euro 2020. Uh, and uh, we are going to be seeing Italy and Turkey taking it, kicking things off on the 11th of June. Uh, and UAE time around 10 p.m. as we can, we can expect the games to be taking place, especially the Turkey Italy one. Uh, then on June 12 on Saturday we have Wales versus Switzerland, Denmark against Finland, Belgium and Russia taking on each other as well. So so mm. much of football to look forward to in the coming few days. Absolutely, and a quick uh, roundup of sports updates as well in cricket. The England and Wales Cricket Board is investigating reports that a second England player posted offensive material on his his Twitter account. They did not reveal his identity this time around. He was reportedly under 16 when this was posted, but this comes a day after bowler Oli Robinson was suspended for past tweets as well. And uh, Prime Minister Boris Johnson, in fact, has backed comments uh, by the Culture Secretary that uh, the ECB went over the top in suspending Robinson for decade-old posts, so the Prime Minister has the players back here. Yeah, it's it's going to be interesting to see what happens next. Uh, but it all it is all down to the discretion of the cricket board to, to decide uh, the fates. Uh, but uh, these things will surface now because after Oli Oli Robinson, I'm sure there'll be a lot of other players whose uh, history is going to come back and haunt them. So this is this. This is just the uh, the starting point, really. Well, stay with us on Pulse 95. So much music uh, to look forward to. Uh, and we shall return bright and early tomorrow morning. We absolutely will. And if you'd like to check, to check out our bits and segments from today's show, head over to our SoundCloud, Spotify, and Apple podcast. Just type Morning Majlis in the search bar. We're also uploading our segments on the YouTube channel, Pulse 95 Radio. Make sure you subscribe and catch our live feed. Thank you all for tuning in to today's show and joining us via the text lines. See you tomorrow at 7 a.m. And until then, stay tuned to Pulse 95. If you liked this episode of The Morning Majlis, drop a like and subscribe. 95. Be sure to follow us on Instagram for all our daily updates and top stories. Bubbles.